Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, our unique monthly update on what's really happening to our planet. Coming up in the programme, to ski or not to ski, how mountain resorts are using climate data to plan for the future. Snow is a bonus, but our ski stations have to be able to function even when there isn't any. That's the idea. First, let's check the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Globally, it was the sixth warmest January on record, with temperatures more than 0.2 degrees Celsius above the new 1991 to 2020 average. If we have a look at the map of temperature anomalies, we can see it's a lot colder in some places and warmer in others. In Norway, Sweden and Russia, they actually had their chilliest January since 2010. In the village of Leiflaten in Norway, temperatures were 10 degrees below average last month. Then in Athens, the first 10 days of the year were actually the warmest they've ever had compared to their 160-year temperature record. Then moving on to precipitation anomaly, we can see that it was much wetter than average in Italy and along the Adriatic coast. And then in Spain, they had significantly more snow and rain than average in central and eastern parts of the country. Now to our report, and this winter has been exceptional for ski stations across Europe. They've had plenty of snow and hardly any tourists because of the coronavirus restrictions. Looking further ahead, though, their biggest concern is climate change, and they're now working with scientists to find the smartest ways forward. I went to the Alps to meet them. We're 1,300 metres up in the mountains of the Drome Department of France to meet the climate scientist who's working with ski station managers on the best ways to organise their slopes as the planet warms. First, the obvious question, why be concerned about a lack of snow when today we're surrounded by the stuff? We're talking about climate change and a lack of snow, and yet there's a lot of it around. You really must not confuse trends with variability. You can have a trend of rising temperatures while still having variability within a season, and even more so between seasons, with highs and lows. Ski stations are already trying to answer the climate question by diversifying their activities, especially in lower altitude stations like this, where last year there were just a few days of snow. Operations manager Marc Aboussier explains their transition. We know that the sectors at 1,000 metres are finished. You have to be honest, we can't fight on all fronts. Compacting the snow, importing snow, that's finished. But here, this is also a summertime spot. There are tarmac tracks. You can do roller skiing on them, so there's something to compensate. This site is really sought after in summer. The tricky thing is to decide what to invest in and where. That's where the new Klimsnow application can offer a scientific perspective. Klimsnow is already working with over 70 ski stations in France to offer detailed climate projections for the next 30 years. Each mountain range is treated separately and within each range we can take into account the exact orientation and altitude of the slope with eight different orientations, different levels of steepness and different altitudes by bands of 300 metres. Klim snow can model different climate scenarios with and without artificial snow, vital to inform strategic investments that take decades to pay off. Do we go towards a consolidation of our activities, that's to say stabilise and secure our snow cover? Or do we just let things go as they are and go off in another direction? That's the question, and right now it's the climate scientists who can answer it. Luckily, some mountain activities are proving resistant to the effects of climate change, like dog sledding. When there's no snow, the sleighs are fitted with wheels, and the dogs are just as keen to have fun, whatever the weather. We can adapt all our activities, whether it's a sleigh ride or sleigh driving. We can offer activities all year long with wheels, with skates or on foot. You can read more about Klim Snow, understand how and why Copernicus has changed its reference period, and see a photo gallery from our day in the Alps on euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate Now, in collaboration with Copernicus.